Have you ever wondered why your immune cells don't attack your body? And what if it did? Our body is made up of several different proteins which makes up complex framework enabling our body to function. But the pathogens that causes infection also comprises of various proteins that function as antigens to stimulate an immune response. So how does your immune system separate you from something else? To understand this, let us look back a few years and see what is happening in our bone marrow during the development of lymphocytes. The hematopoietic stem cells in our bone marrow are pluripotent and hence produce a variety of cells including the lymphoblast. These cells further divide into B and T lymphocytes. While the B lymphocytes develop and mature in the bone marrow, the T lymphocytes need to be schooled in the thymus. When the immature T cells leave the bone marrow, they are said to be double negative, meaning they are neither CD4 positive nor CD8 positive. These cells in thymus are subject to different types of major histocompatibility complex proteins, that is the MHC class 1 and class 2 proteins. These proteins are produced from the HLA gene in chromosome number 6 and are necessary for binding to the T cell receptor. Think of your T-cells as very high-profile assets of the body. They don't just simply receive the antigens. It needs to be presented to them. And your MHC proteins help present these antigens. If your T-cells can recognize your MHC presented in the thymus, they pass the positive selection. And if they don't, they are destroyed. The autoimmune regulator protein produced by the epithelial cells of the thymic medulla expose our developing T-cells to normal healthy proteins from all parts of the body. If the T-cells bind strongly to these self-antigens, they become capable of generating an immune response against our own tissue once released in the circulation. Hence, they are destroyed in thymic medulla. If they weakly bind to these antigens, they pass the negative selection of thymus. Hence, at the end, we get a CD4 positive cell that recognizes your MHC class 2 and a CD8 positive cell that recognizes your MHC class 1 and doesn't bind to the self antigens. This is the mechanism of central tolerance. A T lymphocyte in periphery cannot be activated by just binding the T cell receptor to MHC that presents the antigen. It needs a co stimulation. This multi-step pathway is designed to protect against recognition of our own antigens and their destruction. Any cell that recognizes our own tissue in the body later undergoes peripheral energy via binding of the CTLA4 in the lymphocytes to B7 in antigen-presenting cells, causing apoptosis of the said T cell. Now, how does the concept of autoimmunity fit into this? The thymic cells kill during the negative selection by expressing the fast ligand that activates the death receptor domain of fast receptor in the naive T lymphocytes that recognize their own antigens. This leads to the activation of caspases and apoptosis, making sure these cells never survive to circulate in our body and do damage. Here, it goes without saying that any mutation involving this pathway can lead to the survival of these self-reactive T cells and a series of autoimmune disorder. Also, while undergoing negative selection, some T cells bind strongly to our self antigen, but not strong enough to undergo negative selection. These cells, in the presence of transforming growth factor beta and interleukin 2, drives the development of regulatory T cell from naive T lymphocytes. Your regulatory T cells are the policemen of your immune system. It decreases the magnitude of immune response by producing anti inflammatory cytokines like interleukin 10 when your immune system is overactive. It inactivates the overactive T cells, protects the commensal bacteria which are needed to live in our gut, and prevents against allergy and autoimmunity. Any mutation in production of these cells and expression of FOXP3 gene needed to produce these cells causes autoimmune diseases. This concept of inhibition of our immune cells and their apoptosis is also used to their own benefit by cancer cells to skip immune surveillance. And hence, the concept of autoimmunity and cancer does have some common ground. Although there are various other pathways involved in autoimmunity, this is the basic mechanism of how your body directs the T lymphocytes from self-destruction to self-defense against pathogens. Thank you. 
Please like and subscribe for more informative medical videos.